Hi there! I'm excited as you are to learn about Blazor. In this video, I'm going to explain what Blazor is and why it might be a useful technology choice for your projects. This video is going to be a high-level overview of what Blazor is and how Blazor applications look like for a .NET developer. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. If you want to improve as a software developer and learn about .NET development including Blazor, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. I'll be putting out more Blazor videos in the next weeks, but let's start at the beginning. The goal of this video is to provide you with a fundamental understanding of what Blazor is. We'll take a look at how it works and which existing technology is used to make it all happen. Microsoft develops Blazor and it is a framework for building interactive client-side web user interfaces with .NET. It allows .NET developers to build modern web applications. Let's take a look at the official product page to learn more about what Blazor is. Blazor allows us to write interactive web UIs using c -sharp instead of JavaScript. Blazor has a component model comparable to React or Angular and it uses c -sharp, HTML and CSS to build user interfaces. The first interesting aspect of Blazor is that because we write c -sharp on the server and the client side, we can share the code as well as libraries between the two. Blazor sits on top of ASP.NET Core and has access to all new features of the .NET platform. We need to talk about one thing that is currently easy to mix up. Blazor offers two different hosting models. There is client-side Blazor and server-side Blazor. Microsoft officially refers to them as Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. You can run your client-side code directly in the browser using WebAssembly. This model is called Blazor WebAssembly. When a user visits the website, the entire application will be downloaded from the server and run directly in the browser. This model is comparable with how JavaScript frameworks like React or Angular work. Blazor WebAssembly is currently in preview and will be released in May 2020. The second hosting model is Blazor Server. Blazor Server runs the client logic on the server. Blazor establishes a connection between the browser and the logic on the server using a SignalR connection. Whenever a user interacts with the user interface, an event is sent to the server and the response contains the resulting UI changes that will be merged into the DOM by the browser. Blazor Server was released with .NET Core 3.0 in September of 2019. At this point, it is important to understand that there are two hosting models. It's not yet important to understand all the internal details. Remember, we want to get a high-level overview of Blazor. Blazor is built on top of open web standards. Unlike Flash or Silverlight, there's no need for a plugin in the browser to run a Blazor application. Blazor works in all modern browsers on desktop and mobile. You can use existing .NET standard libraries in your Blazor projects. Writing your code in .NET standard libraries allows you to use it in any project including Xamarin, ASP.NET Web API, Blazor, desktop applications using WPF and more. Maybe you already have experience using JavaScript web frameworks or you're familiar with the rich ecosystem of JavaScript libraries. The great news is that we don't need JavaScript for Blazor, but if we want, we can use it. Blazor allows us to call JavaScript APIs and libraries where we need them. Both Microsoft IDEs, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code provide a great Blazor development experience not only on Windows, but also on Linux and Mac OS. There are also command line tools that allow you to use other IDEs or editors to write your Blazor applications. We are busy developers and we don't want to build our user interfaces from scratch. Luckily, although it is early, there are multiple well-known third-party component libraries available, or they are being developed while you watch this video. If you want to understand how something works internally, you can look up the code on GitHub. Blazor is open source and already has many contributors to its core projects. Alright, now that we have a basic understanding of what Blazor is and how it works on a high level, let's jump into Visual Studio to see how the code of a Blazor application looks. 
First of all, make sure that you are running the latest version of Visual Studio 2019, which is a good idea anyway, if you want to have the most performant tool to get your job done. We also need to have the .NET SDK 3.0 or newer installed. And by the way, if you haven't clicked the like button below this video, it would be the perfect time to do so. Let's start Visual Studio 2019 and create a new project. In the project template selection screen, we choose Blazor app. If you don't see Blazor here, chances are you need to install the web development workload in the Visual Studio installer. If that's a problem for you, let me know in the comments below and I'll create a short video about it. In the next screen, we choose a project name, set the location of the project and click on the create button. Next, the create the Blazor app screen appears. We choose to create the Blazor server app for this Blazor introduction. We'll talk about Blazor WebAssembly apps in another video on this channel soon. If you don't have the Blazor WebAssembly app option, you can install the template by using the link in the video description below. Remember, Blazor WebAssembly is currently in preview. Therefore, the template is not included in the web development load installed using the Visual Studio installer. We click on the Create button to create our first Blazor server app. First of all, let's compile and run the application to get a first impression of how a Blazor app looks in the browser. We see a classic single-page application with navigation on the left and the content on the right. Let's click on the counter menu to open the counter view. If we click on the click me button, the counter increases by one. Let's click on the fetch data menu option, which loads data from the server and renders it into a grid. It's not the most spectacular application, but it let us explore a lot about how Blazor server apps work. Let's stop the application and take a look at the source code of the project. In the solution explorer of our project, we see the three folders data, pages, shared and a few top level files. In this overview video, we don't learn about the startup of the Blazor server application or its configuration. Instead, we want to know how Blazor looks for an application developer. We open the pages folder and double click the counter.razor file to open it in the editor. This Blazor component uses Razor syntax which allows us to have an HTML template and add C sharp logic where we need it. In this component, we have a current count variable that we want to display on line 5. The C sharp code is wrapped within a add code directive. We don't need a lot of ceremony like defining a class. Instead, we create a variable we need and implement a method to increase its value. On line 7, we define the increment count method to be executed on a button click. On line 1, we have the add page directive which tells Blazor router at which URL the component should be available. Now let's take a look at the fetch data component. The structure of this component does not differ much from the component we explored before. On line 4, we make use of dependency injection to get an instance of the weather forecast service clause. We have a slightly more complex layout definition using a for each statement on line 26 to repeat the HTML template for the items of a collection. And on line 44, we have a method that executes an async call to retrieve data from the server using the injected weather forecast service instance. An important thing when learning a new technology is being able to decide if it's worth putting in time and effort to learn something new. For example, it's valuable to know where the development of the technology will be a few months or years from now. The Blazor team did a good job and released and talked about the roadmap multiple times. While we already got Blazor server, with the release of .NET Core 3.0 in September of 2019, we'll soon get Blazor WebAssembly in May 2020. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, Blazor WebAssembly will allow running a web application within the browser instead of executing the logic on the server. In the next step, Blazor will allow us to provide a full-featured progressive web application, PWA. PWAs provide offline support and will enable us to integrate with the notification system of the host, create app icons on the home screen and much more. 
Furthermore, Blazor will support a hybrid model that allows us to run our applications within the Electron shell. It will allow us to create a full-featured desktop application using Blazor. With Blazor Native, we will be able to create native applications without an Electron shell for a desktop and mobile systems using Blazor. Blazor starts by enabling .NET developers to build robust and modern web applications using the latest .NET Core platform. Going down the road, we'll get many more options to make sure our applications can run as desktop or mobile applications too. If we understand how Blazor components work, we'll be able to create reusable components and services that we can use across all platforms from the web to native applications on phones or desktop. I hope you're excited as I am to develop an application using Blazor. This video has been a high-level introduction and overview of Blazor. In the next video on this channel, we will go more technical and learn how to write code for our first Blazor application. I will be releasing an online course about creating web applications with Blazor in April this year. The online course guides you step by step from learning the fundamentals to building complex applications using Blazor. Check out the link in the video description to get a massive discount and early access. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Blazor. Do you like what you've seen so far? Have you already started building applications with Blazor? Make sure to click the like button below, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video where we build our first Blazor application. Thank you and see you in the next.